It's another edition of the UTPA Women's Basketball Show. My name's Jonah Goldberg, and after two more WAC wins, this is most definitely the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Larry Tidwell. Well, I'll tell you, I can just let you know that we're 3 on the league. I have not scored a point, had a rebound, grab, had an assist, or had a steal. So it's all about your play. That's a terrible stat line. Oh, <laughs> it's all about your players. Our players are playing at a, a very good level. we got to continue to take it to even higher level, and that's what we're after. We've, we've had really two good practices this week. Uh, got a few kids banged up, got a few that are sick, but <coughs> and the coach is a little bit sick too, <laughs> but uh, we're going to make it work. You know, it's funny you talk about going to a higher level. I watched your, I got to see some of your practice yesterday, and I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought you guys were doing great out there, and obviously the two games, when you hold two teams to about 30% shooting that were picked to finish at the top of the WAC, uh, how can you get better? Well, the thing that we've got, we got to communicate a little bit better in, in transition defense. We, we let them maybe get to the bucket a little bit too easy. We've got to make them take harder shots. We've got to rebound better. Um, you know, Seattle out-rebounded us quite a few, but we were making a lot of shots, so we didn't get a whole lot of rebounds uh, from the offensive end. But we've got to rebound better. We've got to continue to play great defense, and we're fixing to add a few more things into our defensive uh, array as we're going to start doing a lot more trapping. We're going to start doing a lot more uh, what we call locking up on certain players. And I'm, I'm sort of excited to see what the next 11 conference games hold for us. Now, win over Seattle, 80-58. Uh, to 58, That's the team that was the number three seed in the WAC tournament. Last year they were picked to finish second by the media, third by the coaches, and then beating Bakersfield 77-60. They were the preseason favorites in both polls, receiving the majority of the first place votes. Bronx Pennant to finish second in the coaches poll, third in the media poll, receiving first place votes in each. Uh, but, you know, that would expect, you know, you go in, you figure you'll have, okay, some tight, hard, contested games. And, I mean, you, you won these games by 22 and by 17 points. Well, I tell you, we had balanced scoring at Seattle. I had four people that were in double figures. Uh, Goff had 22. Bush had 16. I mean, she just really become a very good offensive player. If I can keep her out of foul trouble, we're going to be a lot better. And then Tanisha Walker had 12, and uh, Hilder Carson's daughter had 10. And then, again, Tiondra Nolan with uh, uh, an outstanding game at the point with five. But Troy Swain came off the bench and had eight points for us. And if we can get that from Troy each and every game, then we're going to be a pretty special offensive team. Five of those points, I thought, was the point in the game where, in my opinion, it was over. Uh, you, you all had just gone on a nice run to take a pretty significant lead over Seattle. Then they scored five straight points to try and climb back into it. And then Troy hits the three, steals the inbounds, and then and immediately makes hits the jumper. Yeah, five-point play, five-point swing there. You know, the thing, too, that was exciting about the Seattle game, we, we got them into 21 turnovers. We only had eight for the game. I mean, it's in, incredible when you can, at a Division One level, only have eight turnovers. But another thing that was really good is off of the uh, turnovers that we created with Seattle, we got 21 points off of turnovers, and they only got three. And that's a huge differential, and we've got to uh, keep doing that in plus two. I'm so pleased with our bench. Our bench outscored Seattle by the tune of 25 to 13. So <coughs> <coughs> that lets everybody know that we are a pretty deep team. I feel like we go 10 deep. And the importance of depth certainly on sh uh, being shown throughout both games. And you mentioned those. Those points off turnovers. You did it again against Bakersfield, outscoring them 22-12 off turnovers. Uh, we did, and, and that, uh, the, the pressure defense that we do, the ball pressure, the up in the passing lanes, you know, trapping occasionally, we'll squeeze, go underneath, we'll hedge. We give them a lot of different looks, and it does create a lot of turnovers. So we even ran our 12 zone some, and we got some very, very good, very good turnovers out of that because we took it the length of the floor and shot layups. So. Yeah, our, our pressure defense has been very good. Seattle shot 36% from the field. Uh, Bakersfield shot 30.2% from the field. And they have four <coughs> and they have four legitimate scores. And when you can hold a team that good that was averaging almost 80 points to 60, you know, that's a pretty good defensive night. Yeah, four players averaging double figures this season for Bakersfield. You only allowed one of them to get double figures, and that's the, you know, the – WAC preseason player of the year. so and Most you know. deservedly so. She's a nice player, does a very good job. And, you know, somebody's got to score a few points, but you right. held everybody else in check. I mean, you, 
uh, you know, so one of their top scorers, uh, Brooklyn Hankins, he did such a great job on her. She didn't score until midway through the second half. Right. Um, Very good shooter. And, again, uh, uh, got to get a lot of credit to our bench. Our bench came off, got us 17 points, outscored them 17 to 14. And any time your bench can outscore the opponent's bench, then that's, that's a definite plus in your favor. Yeah, you've. It's great. Like when your team comes off the bench, you see a team that I see a potential another starting lineup out there. Well, I tell you, uh, the way that Troy Swain is playing, she's taking it to a whole different level. Hilder, I mean, there, there's your future of the franchise. That's two freshmen, yeah. you know, that can come in and and score at will. And then, um, you know, one that we haven't mentioned that just had unbelievable, just unbelievable games was uh, Raquel Preston. Didn't score against Seattle, but had nine rebounds, had five assists. I mean, I mean, she's stealing. She's doing everything that you want her to do. And then she comes back against uh, Seattle and, and just goes off for 17 points. I mean, again, seven rebounds. I mean, just a great overall a game by Raquel Preston. But the Seattle game will go down in, in my mind as one of the best games that I've ever had a point guard play. And DeAndre Nolan... At 18 points, she was three for three from the three-point line. She had nine rebounds. She had seven assists. She had four steals, and she had one turnover in 40 minutes. That's an incredible night, That's and that was certainly deserving of WAC Player of the Week, but didn't go our way. Well, Nolan uh, <laughs> Key in that win over Bakersfield. I think she she almost hit her career high in scoring in the first half alone, and uh, three of three from behind the arc. Uh, that was a new career high in three pointers. I mean, and it's not so. She doesn't often take a lot of shots, but uh, this year when she's taking them, she's hitting them. Well, I think some comments were made that she wasn't a shooter, not by us. <laughs> well, you know, you overhear comments and you hear a lot of jawing on the floor. And so she took the personal challenge and hmm. and uh, she really stepped up and she's playing at a very high level and she's one of our captains along with Tanisha Walker and Shazae Wright and both the, all, all three of those young ladies are just excellent captains and they're what your senior leadership should be well senior leadership has shown through three and oh start in conference play it's the first time in school history a team's ever been three and oh in conference play what does it mean to you well i like to read those uh, game notes that you do <laughs> because we you know we've said a lot of history in, in two years and and that really is a good thing i mean it, it's uh, so many positives and i like the way that you cover those you know like you know, we were playing last year uh, the best record after 16 games, the best record. After, and that's important to these young ladies because they read that, and we do want to make a difference, and we do want to change things. You know, our, our slogan this year is make a change. And we want to change the fact that we've never been in the postseason, change the fact that we've never had a winning season. We want to change those things, and that's what we're after. Well, you're getting pretty close to uh, a few of those marks. Uh, you're now uh, 10 and 8 through 18 games, which is tied for the best mark this program's ever had. And it's only the second time it's happened. If you win on Thursday at Utah Valley, then you'll have a new program record for 19 And then if start. we win the following Saturday, then we'll have a new record, a new record. Yeah. There you go. I like new records. And so, but we're playing hard. We're playing with confidence. We got our mojo back. You know, we went through a swing there where golf was hurt, mystery games. We played some very tough people on the road. You know, we had a, a dismissal from the team who was a very good player. And... And it's taken us a while to get our mojo back, but uh, we got we got our mojo back, and we're playing playing very very hard. And the thing is, we're playing uh, we're playing with the team concept. We're we're playing for the name on the front of the jersey and nothing else. Well, it's certainly working wonders right now, and uh, you're certainly playing for the fans as well. As you're eight and one in front of the home crowd this year. Well, we do like home games, Speaking and we do, <laughs> and we do um, we do like to get a, a, a huge crowd I mean and that makes a difference for us and um, we've got some key conference games coming up we need everybody there to support us we even flew my parents in for this last game just to make sure we had a few extra well I'm I'm glad that <laughs> <coughs> I'm glad we got that taken care of that we made them happy so it's all good so two big wins over two of the top teams in the WAC Bronx 3-0 and in WAC play now now you go on the road to face Utah Valley and Grand Canyon. Uh, we do, and, and both of these teams are very well coached. Uh, Utah Valley is huge. They got big guards, they got big post players, and they're going to be hard to handle up there. I mean, they just rebound so well, and they shoot it really well. And then Grand Canyon has a, a lot of good guards and 
They liked up tempo. We liked up tempo, so that should be a good game also. Last year, uh, I think it was a split with Grand Canyon and a sweep of Utah Valley. Uh, how how similar? How different are those teams compared to uh, last both year? Both teams are better. Uh, now, and I'll say that uh, Grand Canyon lost quite a few kids to graduation. He had a really good team, but he's got them playing very well at this point in the season. Like everybody tries to do, you know, have your have your uh, starting lineup playing good when conference play rolls around. So we're trying to trying to make it work and. He's also doing Trent Mason an excellent job there, Kathy. They do, they just do excellent jobs at, at coaching their team. So it's going to be hard. We're going to have to be locked in, focused, and we're going to have to hit some shots. Uh, first week of school this week. What's it been like uh, on that first day of school? Getting, every, making sure everybody's. Uh, oh, we up. go from everything of uh, <laughs> getting to class, getting classes changed, getting classes canceled, and books. It's all about we got to find some books to give these kids so they can study. And then we, we start school on Tuesday, and then we leave out in the morning at 5 a.m., <laughs> and we don't get back till Sunday. So we've already got our, got our, got our foot in the, in, the, in the trench a little bit. You know, we've got to get back and recover and do things academically that we're supposed to do. So we'll make sure that we do that and, and go from there. Well, uh, when the AD honor roll came out, uh, I think it was uh, last week, you had uh, quite a few players on it. So, you know, we know that you're making Yeah, we, uh, we're trying academically, you know, looking at academic honors. I know Laura Van Tilburg was awesome. Uh, Crystal Cardenas, Amanda Ramirez, uh, Jada Bennett <coughs> was on that list. Um, uh, Micheline Mercilita was on there. Micheline Mercilita was on there. And also Raquel Preston had some things happen and she was over 3.0. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's one of those things I'm always stressing academics, but you know, a, a lot of the times, you know, Hannah handles that and you know, I've got uh, Eric and Crystal over in the Academic Power Center. They do a great job for us. Got a new guy that has um, that has women's basketball now. A guy named Scott Smith, and so we're anxious to work with him. I got to meet him during the the break for Christmas, and he seems like he really is intent on helping us make sure that we get to all of our classes and have our tutors and get our study hall hours done and get ready for those finals because they'll be here in May before you know it. The Bronx are back in action on the road Thursday at Utah Valley. That is an 8 p.m. <coughs> Central Time start. And then Grand Canyon, 7 p.m. Central Time on Saturday. Uh, for links on how to watch and live stats and follow all the action, make sure you log on to utpabronx.com. He's Larry Tidwell. He's the head coach of the UTPA Women's Basketball Program. This is the J-Man, Jonah. He handles all, all of the good stuff that... Uh, happens in our media relations department and I believe you had a special young lady had a birthday last week or was that a week yes or two? the one yeah. and only Elizabeth uh, that's right yeah you better not forget <laughs> her <laughs> yeah I caught you off guard hey go Bronx go Bronx <laughs>